Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely afternoon. So today I would like to go over Future Motion, which makes the One Wheel Electric Skateboard. The TLDR, and what I've gone over in many of my old videos, this is a company that goes out of their way to make it difficult to be able to service items like the battery on your device. If somebody else makes it simpler to service the battery on your device, they'll get sued by this company, which Leonard French has gone over in great detail with some great content. TLDR, they want to make repairs as difficult as possible, in my opinion, and they are also of the opinion that the repairs should only be done by then, for safety reasons and everything else, and all the other bullshit you usually hear on this channel when we talk about manufacturers that go out of their way to make repairing their products difficult. Now, as is usual, when it comes to a company that says they're the only ones that are suitable to perform a repair, you'll see stuff like this. With Apple, where they put some stupid piece of rubber on the chip rather than actually resoldering it to the board, and with Future Motion, instead of properly servicing the motor, you will see something like this. What is this? This is a picture of a device that was serviced that belonged to somebody who lives very close to my favorite beef brisket place in the entire world, and he decided to come show it to me, and he gave me a couple of pictures. Now, as you can see, there's many things to be concerned about here, like what is this crap? Why is the heat shrink not over the actual wire? Why is this exposed over here? Again, you don't have to be a genius when it comes to fixing brushless motors, e-bike stuff, one-wheel stuff, to know that this is just not the way it's supposed to look, and he also included some pictures where you can see that there's some carpet fibers <laughs> that are included in here. God knows what type of place they're fixing this stuff in. And it just goes over a theme that I've gone over on this channel many times, is that the more a manufacturer goes out of their way to explain how you're too stupid to fix something and all of it should be done by them, the more you see them doing stupid shit like this, whether it's putting a piece of rubber where something should actually go, making a display cable that's so short that you can't even open and close the laptop for more than a year before the shit dies, or doing something like this, sending you back something that could literally shock you because the wires for a high voltage and high amperage line are completely exposed. So I'd like to read what this gentleman sent me and get your thoughts on the matter. So this says, Hi, Lewis. I had to send my GT to Future Motion for repair recently after the board died abruptly. And after receiving my board back, I thought you might be interested in what I have discovered and experienced. This board currently has zero miles in the odometer. It was sent in for blown bearings, a stripped axle, and a locked up motor due to loss of motor phase signal feedback. I work on similar equipment quite frequently, so I was comfortable assuming the risk of properly disassembling, inspecting, and reassembling my board's motor to confirm that these problems were in fact present and the cause of my problems. Future Motion did not and does not know I did this and they did not discover any of these problems. Absolutely nothing regarding these problems was ever communicated to me in any way, as they only replaced the entire motor without telling me, instead of fixing the damaged components. As I've heard, this is par for the course as far as their repair center goes. I inspected the motor I received back in much the same way to ensure that they actually fixed the problem, and instead found something much more concerning. One of the motor phase wires was not properly constrained to the stator, resulting in the wire and its termination point both independently lifting from the stator and coming into contact with the structural rib features in the back of the GT motor's hub plate. This contact caused severe abrasion to the point where one of the phase wires jacket is worn all the way through, and significant wear is seen on the termination point as well, because this wire is now bare. It has the potential to not only not work properly, therefore affecting the board's ability to safely balance and operate at any speed, but also to short the large amount of power from the controller through to the hub of the wheel, and potentially through the axle to the frame of the board as well. This has the potential to deliver a nasty shock to the rider should they come into contact with their wheel under the right or rather wrong circumstances. I have not ridden my now returned board an inch after discovering this. The board is clearly in no shape to be ridden further. This problem is even more so concerning as this board has assumedly only been ridden a few hundred feet in Future Motion's testing facility before passing some sort of inspection somehow and being returned to me, as seen by the large amount of car carpet fiber debris left on the motor and caught in the bearings. If this amount of wear is seen on a brand new motor, placed on a board with zero miles on the odometer, I have great concern for rider's safety with higher mileage. This is not a problem I have seen or heard about on XRs, pints, and pluses, and attribute the fault to a lack of proper quality control within future motion, in our opinion. I have no reason to believe that sending this board back to future motion will result in this problem being sufficiently addressed and resolved due to the fact that if I were to make it known to future motion support team that I have disassembled the board to inspect it myself, the board is now all of a sudden unable to be repaired. Due to the proper disassembly I performed in a product I supposedly own, the same disassembly they were either unwilling to or unable to detect the first time around. This leaves me with two options. Fix the problem myself, something I shouldn't have to do, 
in this far from routine maintenance and service on this new and dysfunctional board, or sit on this $2,400 brick that is unusable. I really want to support this product. However, the actions taken by Future Motion in my case make that downright impossible. I wanted to let you know specifically about this, as you have a loud voice enough properly to inform consumers of these products as well as their flaws. I personally see it as ridiculous that Future Motion outright refuses to inform their customers of the very real and growing risks of using their products, in our opinion, as they continue to prioritize profit over the safety of their customers. Ignoring this problem will not make it go away. Thank you for fighting the good fight. I hope this helps you and others learn about where Future Motion's priorities actually lie. All the best. Name you are probably going to bright blank out in the screenshot anyway. True, you are known as Redacted. And the real point I want to drive home here is not something that's unique to Future Motion or the One Wheel or Apple or car manufacturers or anything else. It's that when a company says, we are the only ones that should be able to do the repair, A, they usually are not able to do the repair as properly as a third party or even many of the people that own the product, and B, Above all, it is not about the safety. If this had anything to do with safety, then something that looks like this would have never in a million years been able to make its way back to a customer. And yet, you can see on this channel, I've gone over it many times with Apple products. We go over a lot of the refurbishing practices. We go over how they actually go about dealing with some of the issues with warranty repair, whether we're talking about the 2011 graphics chip issue, where they're putting them back in the board with such insane heated profiles that you have the board turning brown underneath the GPU, or we're talking about the shoe rubber piece. The people that are often best suited to do the repairs on these products are the ones that are limited from doing so. And I just want you to think about this with a skeptical and critical eye. My earth science teacher, Mr. Sinclair, he said, if there's anything you get out of this class, because 90% of you are probably not paying attention to a word I say anyway, is have a healthy skepticism towards everything you hear in the world. You know, don't go out of your way to become some sort of crazy conspiracy theorist. Just look into things a little bit, just a little bit, before you just believe what it is that you're told hook, line, and sinker. And when a company tells you, you should not be able to work on this product in any way because your safety is at risk. Take a look at the quality of the repairs that they're actually doing. And if it looks like this, then you know where their priorities actually lie, in my opinion. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Lewis, why do you look fatter now than you did seven seconds ago? I ate my lunch way too fast right before making this edit, and I also had too much in my lunch. I've lost like 31 pounds over the last couple of months. Come on, man, give me a break. Admittedly, probably a stupid thing to do right before going on a date, but uh, again, you probably don't come to this channel for intelligent content. But in all seriousness, I know what many of you are thinking. Why are you going in so hard in this one company? I'm sure you've made mistakes yourself. And correct, I've made many mistakes myself when I do repairs, and several of them you can see on this very YouTube channel. And the reason that I am okay with the fact that I make mistakes, two things. A, when I make these mistakes, I put in the time, work, money, and effort to fix them. And two, when I make these mistakes, I am fully upfront and honest with you that I am human. I am not above you. I am not somebody that is on this special plane that should be the only person allowed to fix Apple products because I am so much better. I'm a normal person just like any of you. Are you going to have to put in some time, work, effort, learning, and money in order to learn how to do what it is that I do? Yes, you are, but you have the ability to do that, and I've never tried to rob you of that. I make mistakes, but when I make mistakes, I fix them, and I don't go out of my way to pretend that I'm above you, which is why I believe, and I could be wrong here, that when I do make mistakes on this channel, you're all much more forgiving of me than you would be of Apple or Future Motion, because I'm speaking from your level. I'm not trying to speak as if I'm above your level, as some supreme being that can do no wrong. So when I make a mistake, there's not this incentive structure to go, aha, see, I got him, because he said he's so much because I've never done that here. I've always told you from the very beginning. I could barely pass chemistry in high school. I'm a college dropout. I didn't take any special class in how to do this. I started out broke, and you got to watch the entire thing unfold. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. When it comes to these types of companies, do you think at some point they will actually learn their lesson and just say, you know what, fine, we've sold way too many of this product. We don't have the ability to fix them all at our own repair center and actually start to work with and engage with the community of people that love their products to ensure that customers are supported? Or do you think they're going to keep doing this shit and sending out motors with phase wires that are scraped because of improper installation. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.